Hello! I'm Jimmy Chan, it's Jimmy Chan. I'm your friendly neighborhood Holy Bible Explainer. My channel is Food for HNM. We are reading Psalm 106 by King David. Praise the Lord. That is, praise the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endureth, endures or endureth forever. So here, praise the Lord is hallelujah, hallelujah. So praise the Lord when it's PTL. PTL is hallelujah. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord, Jesus the Lord, or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Rem remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. We have sinned. Even as our ancestors did, we have done wrong and acted wickedly. When our ancestors were in Egypt, they gave no thought to your miracles. They did not remember your many kindnesses. And they rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. So remember the Red Sea is the one that split, you know. The Dead Sea is in Israel. Remember there is the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River, and the, the Dead Sea in Israel. So the red one Remember, they killed a bunch of, like, Ramesses' soldiers on chariots. So, kill, blood, red. Yet he saved them for his name's sake to make his mighty power known. Known. He rebuked the Red Sea and it dried up. He led them through the depths as through a desert. He saved them them from the hand of the foe from the hand of the enemy he redeemed them the waters covered their adversaries not one of them survived then they believed his promises and sang his praise but they soon forgot so verse 12 that is, there's a reference to Miriam who is Moses sister Miriam was the oldest and then like Aaron was the second oldest and Moses was the third but after like boom you know that water killed Ramesses and his soldiers she sang a song a prophetic song and I think at that point the ancient Israelites, they believed what the one true God, the Lord, promised them. Because I think Moses and Aaron told the Hebrews, told them, like, what the one true God promised. Like, he promises them this land. But, you know, what did they see? They saw this water split. And then they saw, like, this water crash onto their enemies and kill them all. And then Miriam, like, sang this song. And after she sang it, I think all the ancient Israelites stood there. You know, they received faith, you know. They believed. So that's what they needed for the journey ahead. You know, it was like 40 more years in the desert. And then they would reach the promised land. But they soon forgot what he had done and did not wait for his plan to unfold. In the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wilderness, they put the one true God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but sent a wasting disease among them. In the camp, 
they grew envious of Moses and of Aaron. Aaron, who was consecrated to the Lord. The earth opened up and swallowed Dathan. It buried the company of Abiram. Fire blazed among their followers. A flame consumed the wicked. At Horeb, they made a calf and worshipped an idol cast from metal. They exchanged their glorious one true God for an image of a bull which eats grass. They forgot the one true God who saved them saved them, who had done great things in Egypt, miracles in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. So he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him. So remember, Moses is the servant and the chosen one. See, we're getting like very specific. When you read this, you think Moses is the chosen one. But remember the earlier, just watch the earlier video. The chosen one is Aaron. So, had not Moses, Aaron, and Aaron stood in the breach before him. Remember, watch earlier videos. Moses had a staff, but then Aaron had a staff too. And there's this thing called the Ark of the Covenant. And inside of it were the Ten Commandments. But Aaron's staff was like also inside the Ark of the Covenant. It wasn't Moses' staff. It was Aaron's staff. So there's two. Remember the Lord Jesus talks about sending his apostles or his disciples out two by two. Like like two of them together. You know. So Moses, it's like Moses and Aaron. You know. There's two of them stood in the breach before him to keep his wrath from destroying them. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. So in verse 23, I'll tell you another super secret. Moses and Aaron did not say something like, Stop, Father, or Stop, One True God. Stop, Lord. Do not harm them. You know, they didn't do something like, they didn't do something like this, like, like God is here. No, you know, like, I want to protect these guys that you want to destroy. And then, the then the Lord of the one true God, the Lord would say, "Get out of my way! You know, I'm gonna destroy them." Not quite. The super secret is what Moses and Aaron would do is when the one true God, when the Lord was angry, they would like fall face down and say, "I'm angry too." And then what he, you have to read carefully. What they did then was like, they're like Darth Vader. They like raise their hand. Both Moses and Aaron. You know, we'll destroy them for you. We'll destroy them. Let me, Lord, I'll destroy them for you. And then it's like, think about it. Do you want the Lord to destroy you? Or do you want like Moses and Aaron to destroy you? <laughs> and then, it's funny, like some people go, I want the one true God to destroy me. And I'm like, Toy, huh? <laughs> you want the gigantically powerful, all powerful, like, you know, everlasting, you know, source of all life and creation, you know. As I mentioned, the master of the universe is to destroy you. I mean, like, do you want the, this or do you want this? You know? <laughs> it's like, usually you want this because, you know, this is my strong hand. You, know, you want me to, like, hit you with my weaker hand. <laughs> so you have to remember that the Lord is actually um, compassionate, compassionate and gracious. And he is like merciful. So 
Yeah, that's the super secret. Like, Moses and Aaron would say, like, we'll destroy him for you, Lord. We'll destroy him. I mean, like, it's better, you know. The Lord is merciful, so it's like, makes sense. You know, everyone's like looking around to have his holy. They have a council. Yep, yep. And Moses, woof. Smart. Smart. <laughs> Aaron's smart. Right. If they destroy all those guys for the Lord, it's, a de you know, they help. Help. You know, you know, the Lord's mercy is. I remember that the Lord would say, like, I love Moses and Aaron because there's something like my holiness, you know. They respect and, like, they respect my holiness. You know? And, like, his holiness, you can't touch it. You know? There's a song by MC Hammer. Dun, 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 dun. Can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. You know, like you cannot damage or like his holiness. Like you know what I mean? Like now he is merciful. He is always holy. You know, remember he is always good, all the time. He is always holy, all the time. He is always merciful, all the time. So you know, Moses and Aaron destroying them is like like a demonstration of the Lord's mercy. Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not believe his promise. They grumbled in their, their tents and did not obey the Lord. So he swore to them with uplifted hand that he would make them fall in the wilderness, make their descendants fall among the, the nations and scatter them throughout the land. Ah, oh, that did happen. Remember, like, Jews call it some kind of diaspora. They yoked themselves to the Baal of Peor and ate sacrifices offered to lifeless gods. They aroused the Lord's anger by their wicked deeds and a plague broke out among them. But Phinehas, Phineas stood up and intervened and the plague was checked. This was credited to to him as righteousness for endless generations to come by the waters of Meribah they angered the Lord and trouble came to Moses because of them for they rebelled against the spirit of the one true true God and rash words came from Moses lips they did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs they worshiped they worshiped their idols which became a snare to them they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false goddess gods they shed innocent blood the blood of their sons and daughters whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan and the land was desecrated by their blood they they defiled themselves by what they did by their deeds they prostituted themselves Therefore, the Lord was angry with his people and abhorred his inheritance. He gave them into the hands of the nations and their foes ruled over them. Their enemies oppressed them and subjected them to their power. Many times he delivered them, but they were bent on rebellion and they wasted, wasted away in their sin. Yet he took note of their distress when he heard their cry. For their sake he remembered his covenant, and out of his great love he relented. He caused all who held them captive to show them mercy. Save us, that's Hosanna, Lord our God, Adonai. 
Elohim and gather us from the nations. That means, remember, the nations now means like every nation, dude, except Israel, India, Thailand, and like his Spanish speaking countries, even Spain. So remember, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a Jew. You could be from any country as long as you have received this gift called faith that he gives you through grace. You know. If you believe in him and you're like, yeah, that's cool, dude. You know, I, I need to know more about this Jesus fellow. You, know, you start to read the Holy Bible and you're like getting into it. You're like, yeah, dude, I like it. You know. And you build your faith. And then you even like go to see a pastor you know, or a priest. And they, they like they give you either um, it is a homily, homily. Priests speak homily. You know they. It's like a sermon, and then you you visit a you go to a church, Christ, true Christian church, and a pastor preaches a sermon to you, and then you're seated with more faith, and then you and then. You know, that faith grows, and then, boom, you know, in a heart that is good ground. And, you know, your faith blossoms, and then you're like, I must be baptized. And then you're baptized, and you join the whole, uh, the Lord Jesus, the one true God's family. So, I you know, he has now accepted you into his family. And he has made like a covenant with you. Yep. Because like he calls you he calls you his like person. You are my people, you know. And then he also calls you his son, you know, or daughter. And then you have to, because it's a covenant, it's like an agreement. You have to. I mean, if you have a lease with a landlord, he calls you tenant, and you don't call him. <laughs> but, like, you have to pay him rent. Have to. You know what I mean? Because you're, you're renting, you're staying in his, like, apartment. But you, like, almost have to call him your God. You know, he is my God. You know, Adonai, Elohai. Oh wait, Elohe, Elohe. My God, the, the Lord, my God, my God. I remember, He is for horses. Elohe, Elohe. And worship Him only. Yeah. So, cool. so remember, it doesn't matter like which country you come from. As long as you believe and then you choose to join his family. Remember, you have to call him your God. He is my God. And worship him only, only him. He is God alone. He is the one true God alone. There are no other God. That we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. You know, I love to sing praise to the Lord. But King David, he's saying that may, he's like a father, he's like an avos of King David. You know, he's looking into the future and he sees that like all kinds of people will believe in the Lord Jesus and call him like their God. And he said that, so that we may hear, you know, so K King David's like, so he will hear many thanks to his holy name, the Lord Jesus' holy name, and glory in your praise. Let me say that again. Like, I actually like to like, sing praises to the Lord. I like to sing praises to the Lord. But King David's like, I see what's going to happen in the future. 
like it's going to be a sweet sweet song so song or sound to hear so many people give thanks to the name of the Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus and like praise him like so many people praising him the, the glory in your praise is like King David is like such a sweet sound and it's like glorious it's like wonderful it's like a victory to hear so many children you know, of the most high of the Lord Jesus of the Father like thank you Lord Jesus and like singing to him King David is like oh sounds great praise be to the Lord the God of Jacob, of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Okay. Let all the people say, Amen. Remember, Amen is something like, so be it. Yehi ye ulirat so. That's may it be so. Or like, your will be done. Yeah, may, may it be so or your will be done. So be it. So be it is an expression of acceptance. It's also like a vote. It's like a vote, you know. Acceptance or resignation. So be it. Or be it. You know, be the change. So maybe so be it is me. You know, like I'm here, or like here am I, or like what else? What can I do too? You know, you know what I mean, like you pray a prayer, and then you say like, may it be so, or Thy will be done. You know, like may it be so is I want to see it happen, or Thy will be done is I know that's what you want, Lord. And, you know, because that's what you want, it will happen, you know. But that's kind of passive, you know what I mean? Like, maybe so, maybe so is like, I think so, you know, <laughs> I think so. But if you, so be it is sort of like, I want to be the, the, you know, like part of, making it happen, you know, amen, I think is more active, you know, like, you want to, you want to take part in it, and you want to, like, you want to do it, you know, you know, you pray that, oh, all these people are starving in Africa, you know, may it be your will, Lord, that they are fed, or, like, before, you know, may it be so, may it be so, or, like, you say something like, When when you when you are saying may may your will be done or you know what I mean like this is is like I want to pray I want to see it happen too but then if amen means like here am I like what can I do to be part of your work or your change. You always say amen, then you start to think, like, hmm, maybe I should send money over there to, like, a bona fide, you know, charity that, that's, I mean, you could do it here, but, like, the need is greater over there, like, in Africa. Or, like, you'll fly over there and, like, try to help people, you know, instead of just, like, oh, yeah, that's great, that one day it will happen, it will happen, I know that's what you want, and, you know, it will happen. You know, I'm just, like, dreaming. It's good, it's good. And then, like, I know you'll do it. You're going to do it, Lord. Good, you know. But amen, like, here am I, or, like, how can I help or join or, like, be part of the positive change? If you keep amening, then you'll just, like, go over there. And, you know. Feed some kids. You know, grab a kid. You know, get some food. Start feeding. You know. 
Thank you for listening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let all the people say amen. So King David is, you know, remember he is a great warrior. He's a doer. You know what I mean? What I mean is like he's a man of action, you know. So when he says amen, he's like, be like King David. Like, do it. Don't just say it, you know, and spray it. Praise the Lord. And keep God first, the one true God. Keep the one true God first to take your places. Believe in the Lord in the Lord Jesus.